Her name is Eve. She's beautiful, seductive, sexy, and the deadliest species known to man. Now, mankind's worst nightmare is about to meet the man of her dreams. And for the human race, the attraction is fatal. In 1995, a smash hit sci-fi thriller launched the acting career of one of the world's most successful models. The movie was Species, the story of a beautiful but deadly life form grown from alien DNA. The star was Natasha Henstridge. Totally shocked me. Most people do a lot of really little movies to, you know, do something that finally becomes successful, and I did one that was successful immediately, and I really hadn't done anything at that point at all. Now, three years later, Natasha Henstridge is back in Species 2. The first thing that Natasha brings to the role is Natasha. Now, that's already a lot. The second thing she brings is an ease and a comfort and a sensuality, a softness, a vulnerability. There are a lot of adjectives that you can use. She's a very beautiful, gifted lady. I saw the first one, and I went, huh, she's pretty. She's a good actor. She looked like a beautiful seductress, this sort of towering goddess. Men like that. <laughs> Many men like that. That's why she became such an icon for a generation of bachelors, I think. Well done. I am too tough for a woman. In Species 2, Natasha plays Eve a clone of Syl from the original species. The extraterrestrial vulnerability experiment has one central goal, to discover a means to defend ourselves against the alien species should they ever return to Earth. She's half human, half alien, but her most of her alien side has been put to sleep, so she's basically being studied in this top secret government lab, and she's got these figures in her life that sort of act as her mother, like Dr. Baker. Microbiologist Dr. Laura Baker is played by another original species star, Marg Helgenberger. I've kind of gotten very attached to Eve because I, I'm the creator, she's my creation. It's sort of, I'm kind of have these maternal feelings towards her because I basically raised her. So when the government is asking me to do all these tests on her, I have enormous guilt about it because I hate to see her in that kind of pain, even though she's half alien. So I'm sort of at a dilemma a lot of the time. I want you to understand that the reason I took this job was to make sure that these experiments were done with regard for you. Just don't forget that I'm human, too. Part of the reason I decided to make the sequel was because I wasn't going to be doing the exact same thing, you know, twice, because the first one was very childlike, was very raw, very new, very curious, and the second one had been trapped, which made it a little different than running rampant, you know, in the streets as I was in the first one. Nevertheless, in Species 2, there is another alien on the loose. Newcomer Justin Lazard plays astronaut Patrick Ross, who becomes infected with alien DNA from soil samples taken during a mission to Mars. Patrick is a Martian. Well, he's not a Martian, but he's an astronaut who comes back from Mars as a Martian. He's taken on some uh, alien DNA, and he's become a Martian unbeknownst to himself. Three. He returns to America, the man of the moment. Son of a senator, football star at Yale, and now the first man on Mars. And uh, he proceeds to uh, take innocent women and, and impregnate them. My sister decided to join us. And shortly thereafter, they blow up. <laughs> and uh, out pops the little species child. The characters from the first story are sort of brought back in order to catch this guy who is the ultimate threat because he's so smooth and debonair. It's nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. <laughs> Among those returning from the original species cast is Michael Madsen, who reprises his role as mercenary Press Lennox. Press is a little older and a little wiser a little less likely to fly off the handle, and he gets called upon to start chasing aliens again. The government was stupid enough to make another one. I think they can clean up the mess by themselves. 
We didn't make this one. So then comes this opportunity to help them track down this other alien, which she's part alien, but they have to reawaken these alien genes, these mating genes. Despite the dangers of reawakening her alien side, Eve volunteers in order to help track down Patrick. She locates me at first through telepathy, but after a certain point where she's hooked into me telepathically, I reverse the telepathy and I hook back into her. Patrick. Eve. At which point I just turn myself in because I know that they're going to take me back to the lab where I know that she is. See, this, this guy is smart. With her alien side reawakened, Eve takes on a very different personality. She's pretty much like a grounded child, yeah, trapped in, trapped in a room, you know, and she got a little out of control at times, you know, so. <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! You're not gonna get your alien boyfriend, no, sir. Let's go. When I see her, you know, the movie takes on a slightly more human element because you see this creature seeing this other creature who's trapped in a cage and you can see the sympathy that he's feeling and that's when the movie sort of climaxes because if these two get together, let me tell you, it's not gonna be pretty. 